That's the power of the cameras of life, people. Oh my gosh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, people are going to die and people have already died. Are people's lives not as important as the economy? Because if they're trying to rush people to get back to work because of money, but, but for example, in the UK here, the numbers are still not that low. There's still people dying every day still. So... Nah, he is saying, like, yeah. I'll ask the question in there. Ask the question, right? So you're quite you're quite young and you're quite safe. If you if you catch corona, usually you you'll recover. You'll be fine. Yeah, probably yeah. most likely. Yeah, more like, yeah, most likely you recover. Yeah. Um. So would you? So imagine imagine you work here. You don't go to you. Imagine you work. You you got a job, whatever. And then yeah. next year when you're struggling, are you gonna be worried about? Are you gonna be? Are you gonna be angry at the government for lockdown? I wouldn't. I'd be like, no. because it's not really a situation that they can control in that sense. I, I don't know. When you're jobless, right, and you're sat, because you've got to look at it from a political point of view as well, isn't it? Like, as much as lives do matter, and it's like, you've got to remember, like, the reason why the country's the coronavirus lockdown is because it, it's not affecting the work, the working force. Like, it's not affecting the working force people, and it's affecting the old people's generation. So we've basically gave up. We basically gave up our work. Our basically, basically, what the government is doing is sacrificing its workforce for all the generation. Right, that's the but people, system. but people weren't sure at the beginning. People, people were saying, "Oh, it only affects elderly people." But then there was also some cases where people who were young were dying. So and that's no one was sure. That's in every situation, though. Like for example, if you, for example, if, for example, if you take out if, if the percentage of young people dying is like, it's an example, one in. One in one thousand, yeah, and for example, hundred thousand people test with coronavirus. One thousand, one young person is gonna die. At least ten of them are gonna die. And I think it was, it was like, I feel, I, I feel personally, I feel like it was a media propaganda to stop young people to go in, to go to see their nans. Did you? I, I feel it was because I feel the propaganda. <laughs> I feel like because like, obviously I know, I know it's real people are, are young people are dying, but I feel like it's mostly done put the media make to make sure like we don't go see old people and you know put coronavirus into care homes because usually like if if you're not caught corona more than likely me and you'll be fine like women yeah but i think what jace is trying to say is that like okay even if the number's small every life life should matter so why should we risk one one life two life okay like do you know like do you realize yeah like um i think it's like expanding it. there's more chance of you crack that from you crashing your car right than you than you die from corona so why do you yeah so another thing is though, like yeah, f okay. So for us, is 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 fine. Like if we catch it, if we don't catch it, that's cool. But if we do catch it, and even if we recover, it's the fact that we could spread it out, uh, spread it around. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. But then it's a risk factor, isn't it? So how do, how how do you stop your livelihood for something that for some for it's, it's about sacrifice, isn't it? So how do you stop your livelihood for someone you don't know, an old person, a pensioner who's gonna, who's still gonna enjoy their pension, right? Do you know what's funny? Actually, and you're jobless. They're like after 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 this all done, yeah, the, the pensioner you will still have a pension. They're gonna be enjoying their pension. There's no cost to them, but for you, you're gonna have to pay like pay more pay more tax. You're jobless. The government is not helping now because government has no money to help you out. Like, are you gonna be thinking like, I wish yeah they locked in the country. You won't. Like, so you're basically like, saying screw the elderly people. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> I'm, not saying I'm not exactly saying that. Yeah, I'm not exactly saying that. But I'm saying like. I can see why the government is now saying let's restart the country. Like there isn't much we can do because okay, because because it's like a flu. You, you, there's it's a risk factor, isn't it? Like it's part of life. Like, we we'll have to deal with it. Yeah, but it's funny actually. I was gonna say sorry. Yeah, go um, on, Anna, go on. Yeah. When 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 this first happened, there was actually conspiracy theories that the government were trying to kill as many old people because they didn't want to pay their pension and they, <laughs> yeah, they yeah. would save a lot of money. I don't know if you guys heard about nah, like no, that as well. Of course, I heard. Yeah. I actually heard that. Yeah. Because because why would they why would they why would they lose <laughs> more money? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not to pay pension. <laughs> it makes no sense. <laughs> it makes no sense. How are you losing pension? Yeah. End up losing your political power, being in office. Yeah. What? Just because you want to pay few pay few millions in pensions. <laughs> No sense, 
but yeah, not Leo. I, I think like it's it's interesting because you like you of course you, uh, you you bring in that financial perspective and you're looking from a long term perspective. And I if I was to bring in like a more of a scientific perspective in as well, my, and, and I, I and I was to look long term, my my worry would be like if you're allowing people to roam roam around when the virus is still active, and the fact that it's a the fact that it's a virus and not a bacteria means that it can uh, mutate and evolve very quickly and then you're giving more a more of a chance to build resistance which will make it harder for vaccine creations and, and development and so on so that's the way we're looking at it and that's why you're getting this clash between the government and the world health organization so the world health organization are like yo hold up on the lockdown whereas the government are like now we, we've got no choice uh, we're losing money this is going to be a problem and that and that's where the clash is coming so i think it's really cool because we're getting that a miniature perspective of like both of those sides well um as you said, yeah, that's that's really that's a good point. Good point you made. I'm, I don't, I'm not really much of a scientist, right? But from what I do know is like, um, as you said, like, um, there's mutations, right? Like the flu, like, like for example, like the flu mutates all the time, right? Yes, that's so, right. So every year there's a new flu jab, isn't it? So if you're if you're what you're saying is if people wait for the vaccine to happen, right? You get the vaccine next year, I mean, like 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 coronavirus might might have like um uh, people again. Right, so and then it, 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 again, I mean, like, basically, I mean, like, a new vaccine is needed every single year, like, or whatever. So, in this scientist's point of view, it's like, so is that really, is that really benefiting any anyone if every single year things that people are going to be dying from coronavirus? Like, it's something that's here now. Do yeah, you know no. So, that? like, the the rush is the rush is to get that initial vaccine out. That that's that's literally it. So, like with the flu, if we didn't have a vaccine in place already because once you have that initial vaccine even if there's a mutation you have a, a quicker chance of developing the next vaccine str- uh, a lot quicker so for example new vaccines for the flu are developed every six months so they're always on it every year so they're like what's the new mutation all right let's do it quick time because they've got that initial vaccine so the fact that we're racing for the covid 19 vaccine is because we need that base that initial that first layer of protection so no, that's why there's a rush I, and I, I agree with you like we definitely do need that first layer of protection but the bit but like it's like um as, as you were saying like coming part of, from a scientist's point of view that we need what protect the old protect the people and stuff like that but at the same time it's like um how to explain this it's like it's like you're basically saying what you're saying is like basically saying we should just shut down the whole financial con- country for which we, which we might find or might not find right in the next two years or whatever because it's not like it's a guarantee we'll find find the vaccine because they haven't found the vaccine that cure for age yet yeah but no, i think no. it's not necessarily about but they haven't found the cure I, for, for sars either the first SARS. no true i think um no, I think until the vaccine i mean it could take time but I don't think necessarily that we have to wait for the like we're waiting for the vaccine before we can get back to normal life. I think it's I about trying to contain it. That's what the government wanted to keep it the low. Yeah, like what government? The, I don't think the, the plan was not to save every every life because I don't, I don't think that's possible. Because I mean, people die from the flu every year, and exactly. but it's about that. keeping it low. I think the main concern was that if loads of people were suffering with it, the NHS would not be able to handle it and that would cause the collapse of it.